They're trying everything to get the word out. Help me, help us, bring him home. But police aren't jumping in. We'll tell you why. I'm Bianca Beltran, bringing you an up-close look at some of the planes getting ready to perform at the Kansas City Air Show, coming up. Good morning, thanks so much for joining us this Friday. I'm Rob Hughes. And I'm Rachel Sanchi, and we have been seeing some of those storms that rolled through overnight, mm -hmm. left around some fog. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's fog, moved out, smoke, right? and everything else. It started to dissipate now. It's, okay. it's, it's mixed out pretty good. Last night, it was just stuck down near the ground as the atmosphere cools at night. It creates a stable layer, and anything that might be in the air gets trapped uh, down around the rooftop level, and that held true to the the fog and the smoke from the fireworks. Showers starting to develop all across the Kansas City area. These are real tiny, but they're mighty because there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. We'll zoom in a little closer here with the radar at pinpoint where those downpours are. Uh, they've been on the Kansas side mostly. See right over Interstate 70 there to the west of Bonner Springs. A couple of downpours there near Prairie Village up near KU Med over toward Raytown. That's how the radar will shape up for the rest of the morning. These hit or miss showers and occasionally we'll get some rumbles of thunder. Thunderstorms become more likely still the scattered variety uh, this afternoon. A damp and humid morning with temperatures in the low 70s this afternoon, low 80s on and off thunderstorms. It could produce some heavy rain. We've already had so much in some places overnight. It wouldn't take that much for some localized flooding to occur. Rachel. Nick, you were talking about some of those showers moving through, and that's what we're seeing on I-35. This is at 75th Street here near the Overland Park, Shawnee area. 35 southbound should be going away from us. Uh, an accident here. We have a number of emergency vehicles. Looks like we might have four or five emergency vehicles there pushed off onto the shoulder. We're seeing some hesitation, 35 southbound at 75th Street. But of course, it is the day after a holiday, so most people aren't actually having to drive today, headed out on their commute, so shouldn't be too much of a delay. Want to head outside, though, and check in with Johnny Rollins. A panoramic view of the downtown skyline, Berkeley Park uh, in front there. Heard the festival down there was fabulous yesterday, and the fireworks uh, just as great as we take a look at that non-existent rush hour we have this morning. Rachel, you are absolutely right. Southbound I-35 coming over the Bond Bridge, looking good. Missouri River down a little bit finally, and as you can see, only a trickle of traffic across here into the northeast corner of the downtown loop. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. All right, thanks so much, Johnny. Well, Mission Police are investigating a motorcycle crash that sent two riders to the hospital. It happened just before 11 o'clock last night near 55th and Horton. Police tell us that two men were on motorcycles and crashed in that intersection. Their names have not been released. An inmate is back in jail after nearly 12 hours on the run. 30-year-old Dustin Robinson escaped from the Lansing Correctional Facility Wednesday night. He was caught early the next morning. His escape is under investigation this morning. In a Kansas City family spent their 4th of July with friends, hoping to find a loved one who's been missing for days. Mac Jones was last seen on Tuesday morning. The last place that his phone pinged was near 99th and Holmes. His phone has since been turned off. Now, the family contacted Kansas City police who say that he didn't meet the criteria for them to investigate. People with the KC Freedom Project say police involvement is crucial in finding a missing person. The longer it takes for someone to start investigating, the more leads and tips that you're going to go without. KCPD say that they are they patrolled the area but could not find him. The family says that they'll continue searching for Mac. Here's the information. He is a 30 year old man. He was last seen driving a gold Chevy Malibu with the license plate there on your screen. This morning, KCMO police are explaining what it takes to get the department involved. This missing person must meet one of these qualifications, needing medical attention, struggling with mental health issues or threatening suicide. Also, if they have a diminished mental capacity, including things like dementia or Alzheimer's, or if there's a strong indication of foul play. 634, we may learn today if you get any extra time to appeal the reassessment of your property values in Jackson County, Missouri. Yeah, Martin Augustine is live with this story. Martin, many of those reassessments have jumped as much as 400%. Yeah, Rachel, and because of that, thousands of you are appealing the reassessment of your home and other properties. In fact, 22,000 of you are on the books to appeal that, uh, uh, that, those assessments after the county accelerated a plan to reassess the value of homes and other property. And because so many of you have appealed and many more may want to, Jackson County's Board of Equalization may decide today to extend the deadline for those appeals. As of now, the deadline is Monday. All of this brought on by a belief uh, among Jackson County officials that property uh, within the county has for 
a long time been under assessed. Now, those reassessments could lead to a big uh, increase in your property tax bill. And while the county acknowledges that some mistakes have been made in these reassessments, they do say that many of those reassessments, including ones that have had big steep hikes, are correct. Reporting live, Martin Augustin, KBC 9 News. All right, thanks so much, Martin. Illegal fireworks are being blamed for at least two fires in Kansas City, Missouri. The first near 33rd in Bales, a 72-year-old man was now left homeless. Thankfully, he wasn't hurt because he was outside at the time. Fire crews say that this should serve as a reminder, though, for the real dangers that fireworks can cause. We have outlawed fireworks in Kansas City, Missouri for a reason. In an urban environment with houses closely packed together and these old homes, uh, they're tinderbox, they're ready to go. And Walker says two firefighters were slightly injured while putting this fire out. Their ears and necks were burned by those flames. In Johnson County, Overland Park firefighters think that lightning could be to blame for a house fire. It started in the 7500 block of Kaylin Road yesterday afternoon. It took crews about 25 minutes to get that fire under control. The exact cause still under investigation. 636, want to check in now with Nick Bender. Nick, how's it looking for our Friday? It looks damp and humid this morning, Rob, but just a few showers. That chance of scattered showers and thunderstorms gradually increases by 9 o'clock to a 50-50 chance, and that's how it's going to hold for the rest of the day. I wish it could be more specific than just, uh, just a coin flip, but with the, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere and all those little boundaries running around, there will likely be storms. It's just tough to tell exactly where they will be. So if you are continuing your 4th of July celebrations today into the weekend, just making it one big long holiday weekend, maybe have the uh, KBC app on your phone. You can get the radar right there. You can look and see, you know, where the lightning is in relationship to where you are. That'd be a handy app to have for the KC Air Show Saturday and Sunday. Scattered and a hit or miss storms will be possible on both of those days as well, Rachel. Well, we are just about 24 hours away from day one of the Kansas City Air Show. Some of the best pilots in the country are landing in KC to give visitors a closer look at their planes and also show off some of their skills in the sky. Yeah, the KBC is a proud partner of the big show. Johnny Rollins, he joins us now for News Chopper 9 to tell us more. Johnny. When we talk about the formation teams, of course, everybody knows about the Blue Angels performing over the weekend. The Aeroshell team as well, another formation team, these uh, World War II era, era I should say, uh, piston-powered aircraft, uh, radial engines in those will be performing, and that is quite a show as well as another formation team, KC Flight, our own local formation team. Might have seen them flying over Arrowhead, uh, setting a couple of records over the years, so uh, they will be here as well. Just getting all set up and ready to go for the air show. Again, a completely different uh, scene expected tomorrow, but uh, it's going to be quite a show. And, of course, uh, the Blue Angels right there, uh, the marquee team performing uh, over the weekend, and it's going to be a great show. Johnny Rollins, News Chopper 9, back to you in the studio. All right, thanks so much, Johnny. He was giving us a bird's eye view of it, but Bianca Beltran on the ground there covering everything you need to know about the air show. Any final preparations that are still happening, Bianca? Yes, in fact, pilots are getting ready for their briefing this morning at 7 o'clock. They're going to go over the show and get those preparations in place today so that they're ready to go Saturday and Sunday morning. And you mentioned Johnny's in the sky giving us a bird's eye view. Uh, we've got a closer look here on the ground, and it's amazing to see these aircraft. Um, and especially because we know that a local pilot is going to be flying this weekend. Lieutenant Commander Brandon Hempler from Wilmigo, Kansas. It's his third and final year performing with the Blue Angels, and so it's definitely a performance you don't want to miss. Uh, if you're a, a fan of the Blue Angels, haven't had a chance to see them before and catch Lieutenant Commander Hempler with them. Now, if you're coming to the air show, a few things to know is uh, you the gates open at 9 o'clock. The performances are scheduled to start at 1030 and they're expecting the show to go on rain or shine. We're seeing those clouds, so you may want to bring an umbrella and remember that they do have a clear bag policy like the NFL. So some notes to know before coming out this weekend. Reporting from the Charles B. Wheeler Downtown Airport, I'm Bianca Beltran, KNBC 9 News. All right, Bianca, thanks so much. Well, the Kansas City Chiefs will have one of their wide receivers flying with the Blue Angels. Demarcus Robinson will fly with the group this morning. Robinson's been with the Chiefs since he was drafted by the team back in 2016. He has four touchdowns with the Chiefs, all coming last year. And for this week's Storytellers podcast, our Matt Evans walks you through his flight with the Blue Angels. You can listen on all major uh, podcast platforms. Well, this was the scene inside stores after that 6.4 magnitude earthquake hit parts of Southern California and Nevada yesterday morning. ABC's Monixar Abdi has a closer look at the devastation of that quake and the aftershocks. 
This morning, California under a state of emergency after a massive 6.4 earthquake shook the southern half of the state. All units, all units, we are on citywide earthquake mode. The largest tumbler to hit the region in nearly two decades. We lost everything that we have. I have no TVs, I have no dressers, I have nothing. Take a look at this video capturing a panicked employee running for safety amid the intense shaking that started around 10.30 a.m. local time. Another angle showing contents on store shelves knocked to the floor and this home completely knocked off its foundation. The 22nd quake was centered near Ridgecrest, a sparsely populated area in the Mojave Desert and was followed by at least 100 aftershocks. The rattle could be felt from Northern California all the way down to Mexico. At the epicenter, officials responding to reports of fires, cracked streets, downed power lines and property damage. Patients from a local hospital were evacuated after suffering minor injuries. The computers were flying off onto the ground. Uh, the water bottle container was shaking. Seismologist Lucy Jones described it as a strike slip quake, which means two plates along the fault move parallel to each other, but in opposite directions. And this morning, a major message from Jones warning of more aftershocks to come. There is about a one in 20 chance that this location will be having an even bigger earthquake within the next few days. All right, well, we'll continue to follow that. 641, a crash at the Lake of the Ozarks leaves a boat sticking straight into the air. This morning, what police want you to learn from this crash. Storage containers explode, causing an unintentional show. Now investigators trying to figure out how it all started. Chance of showers and thunderstorms will continue through the day on and off again storms and likely that will hold true for this weekend. I'll show you the most likely time for those storms, the Casey Air Show. That's all coming up. And here's a live look. This is News Chopper 9.